Hey guys, this is Ant bringing you part one of my door and switch tutorial. In the first part, I'm going to cover how to create a door which the player can open by pressing E. So, as I'll demonstrate here, walk up to the door, press E, door opens. Also, if you walk up to the door and press E again, the door closes. Okay, guys, to begin, first thing I'm going to do is delete the other door. So that way, we don't get confused. Now, first thing you need to do is go into the uh, window, right click, select blueprint class and you want to choose an active and this one we're just going to call door double click it and it'll bring the um, the viewports for the, the for this particular active component now you need to add two components first thing you need to do is add a static mesh I'm just going to call that door now you can use any model you want for your door, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one I used for another project um, here. So I'm just going to select it in the content browser window. And then I'm going to under static mesh, I'm just going to use uh, selected asset from content browser. And as you can see, the door is loaded up on the screen there. Next thing I need to add is a collision, a box collision. I'm going to call that collision. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so that it covers the door. And then hit compile. Okay, once we've created that, the next thing I'm going to go to is going to go into the construction script. The uh, reason why we're going to here is I want to put a bit of code in so that when you place the door anywhere into the, the game world, that it knows where its initial rotation is and it stops any bugs where if the player activates the door then it will suddenly teleport to another rotation. So first one you're going to do is drag off the pin and you're going to put in a set actor rotation. Now come up set actor rotation target is active. You're going to drag off that one and you type get actor rotation. Um, you're going to select the return value here and you're going to promote that to a variable. Now, what we're going to call this is initial rotation. And there. So, in the construction script, um, the actor has initial, tells it where it is, it sets its initial rotation, it gets it. And then it basically says, well, we're using these two values. I know where my initial rotation is. Next thing we need to do is we need to go into the event graph and we need to start setting up the functionality so that the player can interact with the door. So first thing we need to do is select your collision, right click in the event graph, go down to add event for collision, collision, add on component, begin overlap. Select collision again, add event for collision, collision and then add on component to end overlap. Next thing we need to do is from the top one begin overlap type in enable input. From the bottom one disable input. Next thing we need to do is we need to com communicate with the player controller. Uh, player index zero basically just means you compile and then basically this bit of code sets up so that whenever the player enters the the collision around the door it will recognize that and enable input if it leaves the collision it will disable the input so once that's been done uh, next thing we need to do is right click and I'm going to use input E um, E is used standard in a lot of games for opening doors or picking up objects Next thing you need to do on pressed, I'm going to add a timeline. And I'm going to call that door rotation. So double click it. And in here, I want to add a float track. I'm just going to call this rotation. I'm going to set my door opening length to six seconds. Use last keyframe. The first thing I need to do is go into the graphs, hold shift, left click. 
So at the time to zero and the value to zero. And then at the end of the six seconds, I'll type in six for time. Now for the value, uh, the value will determine what angle, uh, what, how many degrees the, the door rotates. So I want the door to rotate 90 degrees, so I type in the value of 90. Uh, click the zoom to fit horizontal and zoom to fit vertical. And there you'll see your graph in a bit more clarity. Now I want a smooth transition between uh, the start and the finish. So what I'm going to do is control click the nodes, right click them, and I'm going to put auto so that it just, you know, it's a smoother opening and closing or when it's reached the end of its timeline. Hit compile. Next thing I need to do is once that's been completed, I need to go back into the event graph. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to drag off rotation. And I want a float plus float. I'm going to drag in initial rotation as a getter. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split the struct pin. And as you can see, you've got your roll, your pitch, and your all displayed as separate values. I want it to rotate basically on the Z axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag from the initial rotation Z on your and plug it into there. I'm going to drag off the second pin off the plus and I'm going to make rotate it. Disconnect that and then plug it into your drag off set relative set up to relative uh, rotation. plug in update and that's the basic code so that when uh, we use this I've hit compile I'm just going to test it by dragging the actor into the world so it's just door rotate it this way I'll keep that open so you can see the nodes firing so there you go you can barely see it but the, being against the overlap you press E and the door opens Now, the only problem with this is that once you press E, there's no way of controlling the door and it will basically run its course. The other problem is as well, that once the door is opened, that's it. It won't reverse, it'll remain at its um, default 90 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how to make it so that the, the door will reverse. And that's done by adding a little bit more extra code into this here. So, First thing we're going to do is we're going to drag off this and we're going to get a less than float. I'm going to set that to one. Now we need to create another variable here um, and it's going to be a boolean. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so that it basically checks to see if the door is closed. Hit compile. moment I'm going to grab that as a set. Now we want it to check basically um, using the event tick to determine what position the door is at. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click in space and we're going to put an event tick in. And we're going to plug that into the setting. Hit compile. Now once that's been created, we need to check if the, the door is actually closed. So um, we'll go up here. What we're going to do is we're going to drag that as a getter, disconnect that node, hold B, left click, and create a branch. So what will happen is, um, if we plug all that in, it'll check to see if the door has been closed. Now. In order to get it to reverse, what we're going to do is, if it is and the condition is false, it's not closed, and we want it to reverse. So, connect the false to the reverse node, and there you go. 
just move it all a bit closer for you. So you can see the code a bit better. That's pretty much all the code that you need to make a door which the player can open if it's already in process of being opened you can press it to close it the door is already opened fully at 90 degrees he presses E again and it'll close it back so I'm just going to close that down for a second and I'm going to demonstrate using the, the door in, within the world so I walk up to it I press E press E again it closes so gone up it's running its course it's opening press E and there you go door closed so basically that's how you create a door which the player can open interactively um, in the next part I'm going to show you how to create a switch so that when you press the switch it will open the door remotely rather than having to walk up and press it uh, thank you for watching guys